Hey guys, it's Neon. I'm here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about Kylo Ren's ass. No, not, I, that's not America's ass. That's not America's ass. No, actually, we're going to talk about Kathleen Kennedy and how she says she she listens to criticism from Which the fandom. As good as she did. It's good if she actually does, but we're going to talk about that. But before we talk about that, I just I just want to bring this up. Uh, Ray's ridiculous lightsaber. Mm -hmm. The only people saying anything good about Ray's ridiculous lightsaber in Episode Nine is the AV Club. Everybody's making the same joke about Dark Ray kicking Kylo Ren's ass. I never heard anybody make a joke about that. Nobody is making jokes about this. Maybe like three people on Twitter. What they're making a joke about? This I've this. seen everywhere. Yeah, I, I don't... Okay, even Mark Hamill. Even Mark Hamill shared this. This is the Ray joke. How ridiculous her lightsaber is. And I don't think Kathleen Kennedy understands you know, how much the fandom is not into But the, she didn't this. write this article. I don't, I'm, I'm still trying to understand. Let me see this. Let me see this article. They're like talking about how everybody's joking about this. I never heard anybody joking Nobody's about it. Nobody's joking about it. Like uh, two Kyle people. Kylo Ren, you'll turn. Ray turns. Kylo Ren. No, it comes. Kind of, what? I don't understand. It's not even funny. What? This isn't even an article. This isn't even. God. That's it. That's all there is. The end of Sad Boy that, Kylo. That. Yeah, look. And that was two days ago. That was two days ago. You yeah, click Mar on it, it probably tells you might have on it now. Uh, Mark Hamill himself actually shared it. So this is the joke. Uh, the AV Club, not in touch with fandom imagine that <laughs> uh, a lot of these outlets that are promoting the last jedi and now episode nine not in touch with the fandom kathleen kennedy claims she is in touch with the fandom and we're going to talk about that in this video as well as some other uh episode nine related stuff but before we get into the video please subscribe if you have not done so already it would be greatly appreciated yep we hit over 55,000 subs, I think, and we're hoping to hit 100,000 by the end of the year. By the time The Rise of Skywalker comes out. I don't think. I we'll don't see. think we're going to do that. I don't think we're going to do that. Lofty but goals. it would be awesome because that would be The Rise of Clownfish. The Rise of Clownfish. The Rise of Clownfish. <laughs> oh. Geeky Rising. That's right. Neon Rising with my double-bladed. Um, well, one blade for each. One blade for each. Yeah, mm -hmm. we should yeah, use a double-sided lightsaber. Oh, I do like the, the Swiss Army lightsaber. That was pretty That cool. was pretty cool. Okay, so um, here we go. Kathleen Kennedy confirms she loves hearing Star Wars feedback from fans, even the critics. Well, you know, first of all, if that is, you know, that's how she should be. If it's true. I'm yeah. not saying it's true. But I'm saying you should be. Because even if you don't like, even, we get criticism before We've had it before in our work and comics and stuff. And sometimes there are valid points in criticism. Sometimes. Well, like, when we got this one. They basically called our comic poo. Yes, we had someone call it comic poo. poo. Now, to be fair, they said, well, it didn't. It didn't. It, it, it was only one chapter that was out. And they're like, well, there's not enough character growth. I'm like, it's one flipping chapter. What did you expect? And they well, they called it poo, but they did have some criticisms that were not valid. And they had some criticisms that were valid. So I listened to what was valid and I wrote them and thanked them for their time. And that I that, that going forward, I would keep that in mind. But they felt bad, so they backpedaled on it. <laughs> on it being poo. Well, it's not that bad. But, you know, you're supposed to be open to criticism. I don't know if they're open to criticism I, is the problem. I have one thing to say about whether or not Lucasfilm uh, current year is open to criticism. No. <laughs> bullshit. Oh, I was like, what's that? That was my to be? bullshit noise. I was like, confused. I'm gonna get... <laughs> I was very <laughs> confused. I was like, are you calling someone a cow? Are you calling someone a farting cow? This I, is like the opposite cow, of the yeah. laughing cow. It's the farting cow. It's very late. We're very tired. That was supposed to be my bullshit sound. And that was just... Uh, yeah. You know, people are going to see you and out and about, and they're going to walk up to you and go, Moo! Pfft, at you. I can't even do it very well. It, it's on the tongue. No, I don't use my tongue that much, apparently. <laughs> Other than to speak. <laughs> so. Okay, so let's get... This is coming from comicbook.com. The intensity of toxicity. God, we're four words in. The intensity of toxicity from certain Star Wars fans is powerful enough to turn some viewers away from the series entirely. That's not what's turning people away. The Lucasfilm president, Kathleen Kennedy, confirms that while negative comments can be overwhelming, she enjoys hearing all the feedback from fans, whether it's positive or negative. No, they don't. They've tried to shut the critics down. 
For most longtime fans of the franchise, the conflict over merits of the prequel trilogy has been the source of most debate, but popularity, social media, and the release of The Last Jedi resulted in the critical mass of fans voicing their qualms with the series, some of which did so using hateful language. Wait, critical mass of fans? I thought it was just a, a vocal minority. I thought it was bots. Right. Was Russian now bots. It's the critical mass of fans voicing their qualms. But I thought it was a vocal minority. Um, now, hateful language and people that are going too far. I agree. There are always some people who go too far. I don't care which side you're on. I really don't. There are always people who, there are always people who use uh, name calling language, bullying tactics and that kind of stuff. And that's never okay. I don't care who, which side you're fighting for, pro or against. N never okay to do that. So continue. I frankly love the feedback and, frankly, the criticism she shared with Yahoo. Well, good. She should. That's her job. I hope they listen to some of it. Um, she added, you develop a little bit of armor, but you learn from that. It's kind of like having a continual focus group that's out there telling, yelling, telling yeah. you things, whether it's what you want to hear or what you don't want to hear. If that was the case, then why are... Wait. Why... Did we allow them to attack fans? Even ones who weren't being bullies, just having an opinion they didn't like it. Why did they allow that to go on until right now before the Rise of Skywalker when they're trying to build those bridges like with toothpicks like crazy? With toothpicks, yeah. They yeah, should start, try and, yeah, go ahead. Should start building bridges like a year ago. That's what I'm saying. They're Now they're trying to build bridges. Now it's like, hurry up, hurry up. Show, show a trailer that's almost all old trilogy. Hurry up, hurry up. Tell people we like to hear their criticisms. I'm like, man, you just opened Pandora's box on that. But, um... As her job, she should be, you know, she, they should have been willing to listen to criticism this whole time, and they weren't. Instead, they said attack people out to go, you know, or even if they didn't send them, they didn't do anything to stop it either. Yeah, I think that was more of a, I mean, I do think they kind of sent goons out. I think... Uh, they didn't stop it either. I think what's the, the turning point, it wasn't even the fans. The turning point, if there was a turning point, I think Bob Iger took Kathleen Kennedy out to the woodshed. Um... Not literally, of course, because he would be, he would be, his name would be invoked. Well, his name actually is invoked in the Weinstein thing, but forget I even said that. What, what the turning point was, uh, all the bad press with Star Wars, Galaxy's Edge failed. Uh, Q3 earnings were down. Oh, you mean, Solo bombed. You can't just slap Star Wars on it and people love it? Yeah. No matter what it is? You mean that you can't do that like they seem to have thought you could do? And you can't like piss off fans and treat fans like garbage and expect them to say, please, sir, may I have some more? As please, ma'am. Please, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. As ma <laughs> much as some viewers like to take an us versus them approach when discussing the fans versus Lucasfilm, it has been very much the fans versus Lucasfilm. Kennedy reminded that uh, reminded us that the studio is just as passionate about the franchise as those who consume if, it, those who eat it, lick it, drink it. If you were as passionate about the franchise as the fans that consume it, you would have sat down. You would have had an overarching story over three movies and it would have made sense and it would have had a, a beginning and an end and a direct progression and you wouldn't have had to bring J.J. Abrams back in to try to fix it because it wouldn't have need fixed because if you're passionate about it, you would have done the bare basic minimum, which was there's three movies. We're going from here to here. This movie's going to be this. This movie's going to be this and this movie's going to be that. And you didn't even do that. One job. You didn't even do that. And that would have been her job. And you didn't even do that. One job. Three coherent movies. How hard no, is yeah, that? Co cohesive movies, you mean. Cohesive movies. Well, no, I mean coherent. Oh, coherent and cohesive. <laughs> coherent and cohesive. It's the two Cs. You know, but all I had to do was sit down. That was just, that was just like the bare... That's just the starting point. And I didn't do that. I mean, but they're, they're just as passionate about fan fiction as you know, fans. we're just like the fans we're trying to find out what's cool what's oh cool kids what's heartfelt oh what's strong God. storytelling and i have to say within reason within reason i love the feedback i just don't like youtube uh daisy ridley earned her fair share of hatred on social media previously voiced how she also understands that criticisms and film are valid yeah we talked about that before she wasn't surprised uh you know everybody's got an opinion uh yeah i think this is just pr spin well, yeah, the movie's coming out. So, oh, we like hearing backlashes with, or, I'm sorry, criticism within reason. Please bring your money. You know, we got, you know, old, the, you know, again, the trailer, which is just a, a, a clips show of so, better movies. Well, we like hearing criticism when it's things like, golly, gee, we need more Ray. Or criticisms like, why wasn't there more women of power in these movies? 
There needs Those to be. criticisms should like with it are within the reason that she wants to. Yeah, hear. as long as it's it's very much like a Disney survey, isn't it? Where they give you a choice of like six mm-hmm. different things, even if if none of those things are what you want. Uh, those are the the only options you're given. Survey says bands don't like it, and I love how it went from a, a vocal minority to a large group. What did he say exactly? How do you word it? I don't know. Oh, it doesn't matter. It you doesn't know what matter. I, you know what I'm talking about. Angry mob with pitchforks and lightsabers, um, but not not this lightsaber because it's ridiculous as hell. It's a ridiculous lightsaber. I'm sorry. I don't care if it was in the Clone Wars cartoon or rebels or whatever the hell it was it's ridiculous people were putting out and it does look like a nutcracker like give the old-fashioned nutcrackers like when we were kids they had them my mom and dad have them they look, she, they look like it looks like a nutcracker it's the double bladed ball buster that's what she's gonna <laughs> she's gonna show kylo ren what's what plus she needs a cheeseburger apparently when you turn to the dark side you lose like 30 pounds yeah damn it i need to turn to the dark side <laughs> We all we turned to the dark side a long time ago. No, and I, need turn, I, I need to go sit, and then, my, to then I can lose some, some weight like that. All right, so this is uh, what's this? Uh, there's a major reunion. Oh yeah, this, this is where it gets interesting and sounds a lot like the teaser plot leaks we were hearing. It's gonna be that I guarantee. Just looking at what little we've seen of it, it confirms all those plot leaks. Yeah, let's or, let's, let's a take a look. Okay, so this is again from comicbook.com. The upcoming. Uh, Star Wars Rise of Skywalker is set to be the culmination, the 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 release of all the stroking of the fandom. The Skywalker saga, which launched in 77 with A New Hope and, and was uh, uh, continued for no good reason other than more money with Episode 7. Uh, star Kelly Marie Tran recently teased the film will unite characters on screen in ways the series has never seen. Well, that could be taken a couple ways. Hmm. What's it rated? <laughs> I'm sorry. With the events of the series spanning multiple generations and the films themselves spanning four decades, each trilogy in the series is focused on different core characters with only minimal overlap from one set of films to the next. From the sound of things, J.J. Abrams will pull out all the stops to deliver a fulfilling, 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 I was thinking full, a full, a full on conclusion. Stop. Star Wars, the rise of Skywalker. Well, I'm just like, you know, if you want to see a way that's never been seen before, you can go to Tumblr, I'm sure. No, not anymore. <laughs> well, I mean, you now you gotta go to DeviantArt or Twitter. Okay. JJ has done a really good job of, of banging, bringing a lot of things together in terms of having characters from the older films. Tran shared with Yahoo, everyone's together in this movie. Uh oh. Even <laughs> Chewy? Even Chewy? Which isn't something that's happened before. Hell no. So it's really exciting. It's really exciting. Everybody is together. Well, yeah, because they they split everybody up from The Force Awakens. Mm-hmm. And even Poe and Finn weren't together enough to, to be together in that way. Yeah. And Tumblr was very, very put out by that. I'm very sure. bothered. <laughs> uh, the trajectory of the prequel films had minimal crossover with the original, original trilogy of films. Um, so they're trying to justify why we don't have everybody in this. Yeah, they're trying to make excuses. Because by the end of the, well, one, you know, uh, they can only do so much with the prequels because they have to end uh, with A New Hope. And, uh, you already know how the prequels ended because, you know, Vader and all the Jedi are dead. You know, they they resolved it and then somehow after they resolved it, they all came back again for no good reason. Yeah. Just so Disney can make more money. So the first teaser for the upcoming film also featured the sinister laugh of Palpatine hitting at his return. Uh, based on action figure, which might only be spiritual in nature, actually, it'd be really freaking funny if it just was that giant action figure that they swiped. And giant... Kylo Ren, his mind was hearing it going. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, he's got. It's gonna be like spaceballs. Like space it's gonna be like spaceballs. <laughs> Kylo Ren is playing with his Emperor action figure, and it's talking to him. That's right. But it would be the good Emperor action figure, the mail away one from Kenner, mm-hmm. where he had like pants robe, like. Because, yeah, remember how the Emperor and the Anakin Skywalker, they had, like, really big bell bottoms instead oh, of having a robe? okay, yes. Yeah, I never understood that as a kid. I was just like, why does he have bell bottoms and it's supposed to be his robe? Because then that, that's cheaper to make. It is. It is. And I never wondered what the Emperor's... I was confused for a minute, but now I understand what you're I never saying. wondered what the Emperor's name was either. And I was very disappointed to find out that they, they decided to name him, him Sheev. Sheev Palpatine. That's what um, his name is? It's like Steve Palpatine. Steven Universe. <laughs> Steven Universe. Steven That's Universe. That's what happened to Steven Universe. So what makes trans comments interesting is that previous films and sequel trilogy have already featured major presences from previous characters. So the claim to be that something will happen uh, in the new movie that isn't 
something that's happened before. Yeah, we know what's going to happen. They're going to have they're going to have a funeral for it for uh, Princess Leia probably because they're going to kill her off too, and then it's going to be like Han, Luke, and Leia's ghosts. And that's when we finally plus, get the three ahead. together. Well, plus they're talking they might go back in time and all. They're going to go grab. back in time. Now I've got the Back to the Future. I know me too. I was thinking Back in Time. Yeah, I was thinking do, it too. Do, do. Do, do, do. Oh God! It sounds as though more characters from the original trilogy or prequel trilogy could potentially make an appearance because we have to shoehorn every damn character into this movie to make sure everybody knows that he did it the best. He did the best. These comments are the only tease that the upcoming film will include references to all generations of the saga. His composer John Williams' brother previously hinted the score will span the entire saga. You know when they go force walking through time. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, this, this Star Wars greatest hits. I can tell you every theme that you've ever heard is going to be compiled into this last effort. Oh, God. Everyone. That like Leia, a mess. Yoda, Phantom, Darth, all of it. It's going to be in there. It's going to be in there. You got to look for them. You'll find them, but they're in there. Everything is in there. This just, is going to be a clusterfuck. It, it, it's, it sounds like too much. It's just, it's just, I don't know. This is kind of... Like this, you need like two or three movies to undo the damage. Sounds like they're trying really hard. She's like, yeah, I love the fans. You never hear from her any other time, and she completely ignored critics completely, and now she loves hearing criticism within reason because the movie's coming out soon, and they're trying to damage control. Hey, fam, come see our cool new Star Wars. That's what movie. the kids are talking about? It's all the cool kids are talking about the Star Wars. Except the cool kids don't give a shit about Star Wars. Well, now they do. When we were kids, the cool kids beat you up for liking Star Wars. Uh, but now you're only cool if you like it. I had a kid step on my Return of the Jedi lunchbox, that chubby bastard. And I remember. You were chubby, too. Yeah, but he was he was chubbier. And he was like the wrong kind, because he was like the lunchbox crushing chubby. Was he like Augustus? He was, yeah. Was he was Augustus? A, he, no, I, I forget his name. Hey, chubby kid who ruined his lunchbox. How dare I should you? Google him and see if he's been he's been in jail. But he was, yeah, he was, no. Wait, he was, you, clearly, he was headed for prison because he stepped on your lunchbox. No, he took it out of my little sausage fingers and threw it on the ground. What did you do to start it? I didn't do anything. Okay, but I know you, so. No, okay, so I, I got into a lot of fights when I was a kid. That's why I said, what did you do? I didn't do anything, well... Was that the kid I hit in the face with the dodgeball? No, it wasn't. He was just a dick. So he threw it down. He threw the lunchbox in the ground. And he jumped on. He he dented my Luke Skywalker face on my. So he's probably just jealous you had the lunchbox and. No, he was making fun of me because I still had a lunchbox in third grade, and he's like, "You should be taking a paper bag." I had a lunchbox pussy. in third grade. I had lunchbox cleared like sixth grade. But you're not supposed to. Well, where I lived, you could. Well, where I lived, you couldn't. Or you got beat up and the fat kid took your lunchbox and stepped on Luke Skywalker's face. It's a true story. <laughs> and I stopped carrying lunchboxes after that because I you felt... Let him, you let him control your, your, your narrative. Control your life because he bullied you. That's like Lucasfilm. I would have brought film. three lunchboxes the next day. One with rocks. And when he went to step on it, I would have hit them step on one and hit him with the other. So, Lucasfilm... Is like the fat kid that steps on your lunchbox. And they've been stepping on fans' lunchboxes for years now. If they're the, the, the original or the prequel trilogy to use lunchboxes. Because you need to make sure you take the right kind of lunchbox or the bags with, with uh, Kylo Ren's face on it. Oh, I'm sorry, Ray's face. Because that's where her face belongs. But you need to take those bags. You're not allowed to carry those lunchboxes. Yeah, so they've been stepping on fans' lunchboxes. Now they're like, oh, I'm sorry. Here's a new lunchbox with our baby on it. Psych! That's what's gonna be. That's what they're gonna do. They're gonna be like, oh look, we've got a fan pleasing movie. Psych! It's a pile of dog shit. You paid to go <laughs> see it, sucker! You know, people are gonna go just because they want to see what the hell they do. <laughs> oh right. <laughs> I mean, we're gonna go because we have well, it's our job, and we want to see what the hell they do. God, that movie made me, Last Jedi made me so angry. I literally that I was mad too. Only saw it in the theater, and I I literally looked at you. And threw my hands up in the air, like, on three or four occasions. I'm like, what the hell was that? Yeah. Oh, right, 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 right off. It starts with a your mama kind of phone call, look, prank call. Yeah, we're looking at each other like, what the hell was that? What is this? I what is like, this? <sighs> Hux, the guy that plays Hux. Uh, Don Mulgleason. Don Mulgleason, is that how you pronounce his name? He was out there. He was making comments about how, yeah, this one's not going to have knock-knock jokes in it. 
Oh, Ooh, shots fired. I like so him. I don't think everybody was real happy with. Okay, so it wasn't uh, just us when it started off like that. I mean, yeah, Star Wars always kind of a little bit of cheesy humor inserted into it, but that was just like, what? What? The prank phone calling? What? And then he gets already killed, then he gets put in the corner while Holdo takes over. I would like to see somebody put together an edit of The Last Jedi's uh, stupider scenes set to like the Benny Hill music. Oh my god. <laughs> Like you've got Hux, you know, spin around and ground. You got you know, Luke milking aliens. You got, you know, uh, <laughs> there's your homework, people. Put Make together, it put together an edit of the Last Jedi's dumbest moments and set it to the Benny Hill music. There you go. And uh, we will, we will absolutely, uh, no, I'd get demonetized and say we, we will play that video during a Clownfish TV video. But then I just realized that Lucasfilm's probably gonna strike us for that. Okay, let's make sure it's not Just make it for your own amusement and laugh and laugh and, share it. and laugh and share it. Uh, we will gladly share it if somebody could do that. There you go. I don't have time. I don't have, we don't give, have time. I don't have time. We give don't. a shit. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it sounds funny. All right. Uh, it sounds funny in my head. It might not actually be funny. Well, that's what a lot, a lot of things, things sound funny. A lot funny of things you head. say sound funny in your head, but then yeah. you open your mouth. So My head's a funny, funny place. Okay, so we're going to... we're oh, gonna. I'm, I'm not even... Okay. Bye, guys. We'll hope you have a good night, and we'll see you later. Goodbye. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching Clownfish TV. Please consider supporting the channel. Go to clownfishsupport.com. That's clownfishsupport.com. And if you want to join our community, go to clownfishtalk.com. That's clownfishtalk.com. Please subscribe. Ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.